All right. Shalom, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. I am Jonathan, the Code Searcher. Got any idea what I want to talk about? These these uh, hurricanes in the past couple of, uh, well, past month, Helene and then Milton. There's a really interesting conversation going on right now, and uh, I want us to tap into that. We're going to watch a couple of things, uh, two sides of the story, and then I'm going to share some code or a code and some scripture would you at the end of this, but I want you guys to comment on what you think. Very interesting discussion here, right? Was this thing man-made or was this from natural occurrence or was this the hand of Yah? I want you to tell me. So let's get right into that. We're going to go to one of my favorite channels, you guys, which is Redacted. The other day I saw a really good interview um, with Dane Wigington. And Clayton Morris, let's let's tap into this right quick, and uh, I want to take you over to another opinion, outlook on things, and uh, let's talk about what what's really going on. Is the United States government manipulating and even worse controlling the weather using Nexrad Doppler radar installations? It sounds like a conspiracy theory until you realize the U.S. government has these installations all over the United States. Watch. Was Hurricane Helene's path and behavior? just the result of natural processes and climate patterns, or was it manipulated? The circular blue flashes seen in this video are frequency transmissions from the NEXRAD network of transmitter installations. All available science evidence makes clear that atmospheric frequency transmissions can and do have a repelling effect on air masses, especially if and when the air masses have been seeded with electrically conductive nanoparticles. The brighter the blue flash from a frequency transmission installation, the more pronounced and powerful the repelling effect on any air mass or storm in the vicinity will be. Where there are no blue flashes, there is no transmission, thus no repelling effect, thus no resistance for a migrating storm. Translation, a migrating storm will be hindered from moving toward frequency transmissions and will easily migrate in a direction with no transmissions. So again, I ask, was Hurricane Helene's path and behavior just an act of nature or was it engineered? You decide. Well, the voice you heard there is Dane Wickington. He is the lead researcher and administrator for the website geoengineeringwatch.org. He's the executive producer of the groundbreaking doc climate engineering documentary called The Dimming. I encourage all of you to watch it. Dane has devoted the last 20 years of his life to constant research on the issue of covert global climate engineering operations and the effort to expose and halt these criminals. Dane Wickington joins me now. Dane, great to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you for your voice in this most dire issue that too few are aware of. And regarding climate engineering, it's not speculation or theory or hypothesis, it's a matter of the historical record, with mountains of documents to back up the fact that these programs have been ongoing for decades. Ongoing for decades. I think a lot of Americans are like, this sounds like a conspiracy theory. It's absolutely not. Um, you broke a big story this week that lawmakers who were briefed on these weather weapons concluded that what happened in North Carolina, Hurricane Helene, was engineered by the Department of Defense. Can you elaborate on that? Jim and Watch is communicating with congressmen from the Carolinas, from Connecticut, from Tennessee, and they are all very aware of these programs being ongoing and operational. And, and I want to delineate here this. There's a very marked difference between, quote, weather modification, which many people are familiar with, single engine propeller driven airplane with a few flares on the wings. That is not this. With climate engineering, we have, for example, a KC-135 military tanker can distribute 100 tons of toxic material into the skies to seed cloud moisture in a single payload. So they're two very different animals. And the local publicized weather modification operations are simply used as a smokescreen to mask the unimaginably larger climate intervention operations. So, and again, we have going back decades, uh, congressional documents at geoengineeringwatch.org. One is 800 pages long, outlining the scope and scale of these operations, even going back to the 70s and before, and the intergovernmental cooperation, even between governments with otherwise adversarial relations, is stated as such in this document. Document calls for blanket legal immunity for anyone and everyone involved with these programs. So again. We have film footage of these aircraft at altitude, nozzles visible, turning on and off. This is not condensation we see in our skies. All military tankers and all commercial aircraft are outfitted with a high bypass turbofan jet engine, jet powered fan. 90% of the air that moves through that engine is not combusted. So we should see, except under rare circumstances, we should see nothing behind these aircraft. And we're just asking people to investigate the data, connect the dots. This is absolutely ongoing. So let's talk about, I want to talk about Helene in a minute here, but right now we've got these, we've got Hurricane Milton bearing down on Florida and overnight we see this small sort of secondary storm now in front of it, almost like a twin storm about to hit Florida. Then overnight we also saw these massive wildfires breaking out in the Tetons uh, in Wyoming. So, you know, a lot of Americans are so frustrated right now. They're sitting there saying, why would our government do this to us? Um, first of all, let's talk about Milton. Is this, is there any weather modification by the government being used or directing of this storm into Florida? From your evidence? 
Short answer, yes. And if I could back up to why would our government do this? Why wouldn't they do this when you know this has been business as usual for decades? If we look at what the Washington Post published all the way back in 1977. Well, you know, I can I can I can have one guess. Um, this is all Trump country that that's been affected. But I digress. But the U.S. military had conducted no less than 239 open air biological tests on innocent, unknowing U.S. civilians. That's what we know about going back that far. If we look at the nuclear bomb detonations in, in Nevada, we have peer-reviewed study now to prove that those detonations eventually caused no less than 500,000 downstream deaths from the fallout for U.S. civilians. That's peer-reviewed study. So again, for those that can't imagine that the people who actually control our government, which I would argue is not any elected official, it's those who control the flow of money, this is business as usual, and why wouldn't they do this? Why wouldn't they use weather as a covert weapon of control? When, If we look all the way back, Clayton, to film footage of Lyndon Johnson in 1962, former U.S. President Lyndon Johnson, 1962, on film, on the record, ranting like a lunatic, stating we had the power to control the world's, world's cloud layer then, 62 years ago, and, quote, he who controls the weather controls the world. So, again, this is not speculation, and we have other governments like China openly. Let me just add to that, uh, because when I started studying this, the word I got from the father was, he who controls the sun controls the weather. Be announcing their massive weather modification operations, and yet if you bring the subject up here in the U.S., suddenly you're marginalized. That needs to change. In regards to uh, Milton, there's no question it's being manipulated, and there's a global network of frequency transmitters that have a repelling effect on the air mass that is heavily seeded with electric conductive elements. And if you saw the track of Milton, it got hung up a bit on the Yucatan Peninsula. There's a massive transmitter in Cancun, and we recorded the transmissions from that, trying to bump that storm back onto track. And again, once it gets near enough to landfall in the U.S., where the NextRad network then becomes the controlling element, we've recorded this again and again and again. Even with hurricanes like Harvey, for example, Clayton, you might remember seven days in advance, they seemed to know where it was going to go and that it was going to sit there for days. How could they possibly know that unless that's the plan? And we recorded Harvey. We recorded the actual transmissions with Harvey, Ian, Maria, Michael, all these hurricanes and their interaction with the transmitters. This is patented technology. So, again, it's not like we're speculating. No, no speculating at all. So these next rad, we showed at the, the very beginning here what happened with Helene. Um, when you have these next rad uh, frequency transmitters, where are, are these? Are these on military bases, these installations? What exactly do they look like? And how are they, how are they being operated? And I guess by whom? Is it the Department of Defense? What we know. You guys ever seen these? Around your around your area, I bet you have. I have. Um, these all these are all over. By the way, in the code that I uh, I worked that I got from Glazerson, next ride is not in there, but harp is. Now I don't know what that means, um, but um, this is not in there. Uh, I bet you guys seen this before, right? These towers that have a big ball on on it. That's what these guys are talking about. They're all over the United States in an array from, for example, congressional documents, is there, is many, many, there are many agencies involved with the overall operations of these programs, but they're all compartmentalized. So the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. There's certainly central coordination for the next red network, and, and that's visible from the manner in which you can see these transmitters energizing. They're clearly completely coordinated. We do have some of the transmitters on bases, but some are not on bases. And it's even with what we think are just new cell towers going up everywhere. We know from those installing those towers that many of those installations have 10 times more power being supplied to them than they need for communications. And we can see their effect on water vapor loops. They are affecting the, the flow of precipitation. They are absolutely a part of these operations. And Clayton, if you've ever seen the herringbone patterns, the perfectly synchronized or aligned herringbone patterns in the clouds in the sky, if you've ever seen that, and sometimes you can see those in perpendicular directions, and that's indicative of overlapping transmissions from different transmitters. You, you can't have that atmospherically otherwise. And so we have the entire meteorological community, the so-called science community, pretending that there's all these new cloud formations and all these anomalous phenomena we see in our skies are just something new that nobody ever noticed for 100 years. And they name 18 new clouds going back several years. And I mean, the blatantness with which these programs are ongoing is staggering. And people think, well, someone would be, everyone would be lining up to talk about this, right? The experts would all be coming out of the shadows to admit to this. What happens to whistleblowers? What happened to Assange? What happened to John Caracou? The only the person who blew the whistle on the illegal torture programs, he's the only one that went to jail for it. So no, people aren't going to be lining up. And we have, right now, Clayton, we have an illegal federal gag order on all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees, the nation's weathermen. Why in the world would you have an illegal gag order on those agencies forbidding them from discussing any of the agency operations? Well, I mean now that's pretty interesting. 
What's your what's your thoughts on that? Americans sitting there saying, why would they do this? Why would the government direct this into, no, we can talk about Hurricane Helene now, into this section of Western, of Western North Carolina. And, you know, if you guys remember, let's just re refresh your memory. Um, if you don't go back and look at one of the last videos that I put out um, on, um, you know, when I came home from Sukkot in Tennessee. And by the way, that's over, somewhere over here um, on this map here. I was literally right in the epicenter of where this was going um, and actually drove through um, many of these areas like Asheville and uh, Chimney Rock. I, I stayed one night in Gatlinburg and we we kind of explored that whole, it's beautiful, beautiful area. Um, since I, I was a kid, I've always known it to be the Bible Belt, uh, but here in the last week or so, I've learned a lot of more information about this area and how there's a lot of witchcraft there and also some of the alphabet people uh, a lot of those also in St. Petersburg and Sarasota and Tampa Bay, the alphabet. I can only say so much, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, very interesting to me. I hear, I heard the father speaking to me, told me to observe everything that I could. I didn't really know what was going on until I got out of there. I didn't know what y'all was showing me. Uh, I just felt the sense of urgency to get back home to Miami and uh, it was about halfway through that trip when I realized there was a there was a storm bearing down on us. We made it through safe. And and just to add to that, folks, I got a lot of messages when Milton hit. I wasn't even there. You know, I flew out uh, day before and a 16 hour journey uh, that I was required to take. And uh, and I'm just now getting over uh, the, the jet lag of that. That's why I'm like commenting on this. But um, you guys, I wasn't even there for, for the storm. So um, I, I was perfectly fine. And just a little update on my uncle who was on a shrimp boat on the East Coast in Fort Pierce. Uh, we, we put out prayers for him on Facebook. He he He's fine. A little bit of damage on his boat, minor damage. He and his crew are fine. They were forced to, to ride out the storm on the boat. And um, what a story he's got to tell. But anyway, let's go back to this, folks. You remember Helen when it hit and uh, we were speaking about this and you know, I said, watch what I do here, right? Also, I got a confirmation through Brother Martin's video uh, from uh, another YouTuber who was um, speaking about the time of the sifting and, you know, Yas hand being at work and this was Yas hand and not the enemies, right? Remember that? If you follow Occam's razor, the shortest, uh, you know, most direct response makes sense, right? And if it's the Department of Defense, Folks, I, I came home down, down 95 and, and uh, you know, this, this was Helen, right. And uh, had no idea. We, we, we'd had no uh, service up in the mountains. And so I didn't know anything that was going on with this storm. Directing these weather weapons and they don't want Trump voters to vote for Trump. I mean, maybe that's the direct line here. Why would they do that? Well, would it be to end the wars in Ukraine? Would it be to end the wars in the Middle East? They're going to be put out of business, tens of billions of dollars at stake if Trump becomes president. I mean, is that a is that a leap too far? No, I don't think it is. I would just simply add that there are other layers as well. So we have Piedmont lithium in North Carolina that was hemorrhaging hundreds of millions of dollars because of the roadblock of the owners that were not cooperating, did not want that mine to proceed. We have Piedmont lithium's contracts with the DOD in 2025 that were, were coming due. So we have the DOD pursuing that lithium and again, why would we think that this kind of operation wouldn't be conducted by those who actually control the power in Washington? And I again would argue that's those ultimately who print the money. And we have other historical records of this, Clayton. For example, immediately after 9-11, we had General Wesley Clark, the former NATO Supreme Commander, with a list of countries that were to be targeted because of that event, a list that clearly existed before that event ever occurred. Subsequently, every one of those countries underwent a once in 1,000 year drought. That's statistically impossible without climate intervention. And to back this up, we have the leaders of those countries in the case of Iran on the floor of the UN stating emphatically, NATO is cutting off our precipitation. You guys, with these last two storms, particularly with Justin Rhodes up in Tennessee, the, the report was one in 1,000 year flood, but also in Florida, they use the same terminology, one in 1,000 year um, you know, flooding and storm damage. What's up with this term? One in 1,000.
and they can see with their weather monitoring equipment what's going on upstream. So again, why would we think this isn't going on? We could go back further to Project Popeye in Vietnam in the 60s, where the US military was so successful at the flow of precipitation over that country that by the 70s, there were international treaties forbidding weather warfare. Not that anybody pays any attention to that. So again, for Americans that think that this wouldn't be ongoing or we don't have the technology for this, it's, it's, it's simply ridiculous. We have patents going back for weather modification all the way back to the 1800s. We have about 200 at geoengineeringwatch.org, 200 plus. It's an extensive list of patents and new ones all the time for everything from hurricane modification to precipitation control to chemical ice nucleation. Clayton, have you you've seen how much hail is falling that's the size of baseball and softballs of late? Yeah. That's not nature. And, well, I was going to ask you about that. So many people posting on social media saying they've never seen storms like this before. They've never seen, they're, they're filming it continuously for minutes at a time with lightning going off every few seconds. Uh, you know, traditional thunderstorms, you see lightning maybe every few minutes, um, but for it to be going off, it looks like something out of a movie. It looks like something out of a Lord of the Rings trailer or something like that. Um, so we're seeing all sorts of different patterns and people are saying that they've never seen storms like this. Um, are they right no. or are they just... How about the War of the Worlds movie? When you're speaking about movies, right? Remember the lightning <clears throat> in the War of the World, War of the World movie with Tom... Uh, what's his name? You know what I'm talking about. That movie. Lightning. Conspiracy theorists. And by the way, there, where my uncle was in Fort Pierce, it was the tornadoes and the lightning, constant lightning, uh, that was the danger where he was. It wasn't really the the, the surge. Uh, I mean, again, this is this is a matter of uh, the emperor has no clothes. Again, it's it's we need to use our sense of reason. It's absolutely occurring. And as far as the excessive lightning now, we have an ionized atmosphere. It's much more electrically conductive. These particulates are electrically conductive. And we're talking about, based on our lab tests, working with the University of Minnesota, hundreds of lab tests over that state, and extrapolating the amount of climate engineering elements in the precipitation and projecting that globally, it appears as if somewhere in the range of 40 to 60 million tons of toxic electrically conductive nanoparticles are being dispersed into our skies. That creates more static buildup, Again, more electrical conductivity in the clouds. Now we have the clouds being blasted with microwave transmission. So it's, it's the atmosphere is being treated as a physics lab in a war zone at this point. And on the chemical ice nucleating elements, which are used to temporarily and toxically cool down surface temperatures in various regions. In fact, that happened. That's another layer for Helene. We had an anomalously less warm region in that part of the U.S. While the rest of the U.S., and for example, where I live in Northern California, it's been 100 degrees plus for about six months with no rain. And, and the no rain part is absolutely a result of climate engineering as well. We can see what they're doing on satellite imagery it cuts off the precipitation to the west, and that plugs into the wildfire scenario. All these puzzle pieces. And there was a wildfire in Wyoming that sparked off um, at the same time that Milton was hidden. Pieces fit together completely. And on the chemical ice nucleation part, if your listeners search Lake Michigan ice balls, for example, look at the photos of what we don't see on Matrix television. 75 pound, perfectly spherical ice balls covering the shores of Lake Michigan. And this is happening in the Baltic Sea, the Arctic, that's what happens with a chemically nucleated element. And for the massive hailstones, when you create this ice nucleation process far earlier, it builds up far faster. That's why you end up with that. And that's why now insurance companies suddenly are canceling everybody for hail damage because now it's off the charts, just like the lightning. Unbelievable. So let's talk about Milton here. And Dane, I'll get you, I wanna be respectful of your time. Milton, right, this is about to hit. The weather modification here, have you, you've seen evidence of that, uh, the manipulation using these next rad radar systems off of Cancun to get it back on track. It looked like it was going south to more towards Cancun uh, in that direction. I want to point out something here, you guys. Uh, when this first, uh, when it first kicked off, it was a moderate storm. Um, not No real um, serious thing, especially when it was around Cancun. But, but this particular area of the Gulf is very warm. And as this thing was moving through, as you're going to see on uh, Ben Davidson's channel, Suspicious Observers, what I show you there, we had a solar flare that hit. And that's when this thing went from like a two or a three to a five overnight as that solar flare was hitting, right? Well, that's going to be important here in, in a moment. You say that it was pushed back to the north. And just can you talk about that? And then also, what is the goal with Florida? Why Florida, right? I mean, at the end of the day, there's got to be a purpose for this. So why are they targeting Tampa specifically? Is there some reason that you've been able to identify or or is that not in the, that's in the realm of speculation at this point? At Jim Jim Arsenal, we are careful to only state what we can back up. Incidentally, this stadium where they where they um, were housing people or were housing first responders, the, the roof got ripped off. It was a canvas roof, guys. So, you know, poor planning there, but um, 
you know, give them an, an E for effort. With data. So in regard to the agendas and objectives, that's, there are likely many and behind closed doors, uh, whatever is going on there for the ultimate goal is difficult to state. What we can state with certainty is these operations are real, ongoing, they're patented processes, they're affecting these storms. And, and Clayton, if we go one step further, we've had for decades patented technologies to suppress these storms, to stop the convection. We have products like Dynamat designed to reduce the convection, and pull the moisture to the surface at minimum, at absolute minimum. If they didn't want these storms to happen, they would not happen. And we're not stating on the spawning of these storms, the oceans are superheating. Nature can certainly spawn these storms, although with atmospheric pressure zone manipulation, which is absolutely ongoing, again, for decades, this technology has existed. HARP, for example, in Alaska, many of your followers may know what that is. That's an ionosphere heater. It's a weapon of mass destruction. It's not some benign research facility. All right, still another 10 minutes to this interview. You guys can go see that over at Redacted. Uh, again, one of my favorite channels. Um, I want to stop it here and move on to... Um, the next one I have for you, which is come, comes from um, Suspicious Observers. Um, I really like Ben. He is a no-nonsense kind of guy, and he's not going to he's not gonna sugarcoat, and he's not going to embellish. He's going to, you know, tell you how it is. And that, that's why, one of the things I like about him. But he's got several really interesting videos over here. And this one uh, in particular, I want us to pay attention to, Harp, Weather War, and Spraying the Sky. And then this one right here, which... I mean, he had been basically calling this the same kind of thing with other storms, you guys, and saying the same thing. So, so Ben's got a history of being very consistent and and spot on when he when he's calling these things. So, I just want to point that out. I got a lot of respect for the science. Incidentally, the science and the Bible go hand in hand. Yah invented science, right? And he's also the one who controls the sun, moon, and stars. The sun plays a big role in this. I hope you guys know. And I, to, to, to date, I don't know if there's any kind of um, manipulation of the sun. We are not only on the right side. Um, right. Let's watch this together. Out of science, culture, but that we are careful and intelligent rather than rash. So let's talk harp, weather wars, and spraying the sky. Let's begin with a key principle that will be as true here as it is anywhere else. The truth is always found in the middle of the loudest screaming, most extreme opposite sides of a story. Longtime viewers here know of many such examples, like how it's neither true that humans are causing deadly global warming, nor is our activity of no consequence to the planet. The truth is nuanced and involves degrees of impact and a few more players in the theater, like the sun's impact and Earth's magnetic pole shift, which is well underway. If you are newer here, how about the wild screams from the political realm, thinking the other side is pure evil? Obviously, the truth is more nuanced than either one of those options, even if it seems like the last few years have shown us it is closer to one side than the other. In the case here today, it is neither true that they control the weather, nor is it true that we can't influence or modulate the conditions. The truth is more nuanced. Let's begin with some words on harp. Only once did they ever turn it on full blast. It was visible on about eight to ten different detector Okay, so this is a great point right there, what he just said. It's more about nuance, okay? So uh, listen to my, my friend here. He, he knows what he's talking about. This guy's coming from, from, you know, science and rational thought and um, staying away from so much. I mean, it, we have a, a, a problem online with, with conspiracy, and, and I'm not saying that there's, there's no conspiracies. I'm saying we've got a rash of, of over conspiracy, you know, making everything a conspiracy. <clears throat> and when sometimes there's just simple answers to what has happened. Types and had a minuscule impact on a high pressure cell. You cannot hide something like harp in this day and age from ionosons, radar, Schumann resonance, and several more. We know when they use it and they just plain suck at impacting the weather. If that is even their goal, which it probably isn't during this time, it was a top-level secret classified project. When they realized it was a failure, they turned it into a limited hangout and psychological operation. In the span of 90 days, it went from a secret project to six books were released, a TV show about it on the History Channel, and it was the subject of speakers touring the country, quote, risking their lives. That's the single greatest example of a false story put into our community that has ever happened. Come on now, you're not gonna fall for that, are you? Don't forget, the people we don't trust the most are actors and politicians. And who told you to be scared of Harp? Jesse Ventura politician and actor, handing us an enemy on a silver platter and then told us to go scream about it on the internet. 
On the topic of weather war, the fact is what we hear online is a bit overblown. There are lots of wish list documents you can find online, most from the military, but they are wish lists and often include some really crazy stuff. Operational products are another matter, and you need to remember, the real stuff they use is kept secret, and they're pretty good at that. They misdirect everyone else with what they make public. We see the fake stories and the failed products. Beyond the distraction documents they let us see, of course there are the patents, but why are so many in this realm abandoned? Well, it's for the same reason why 99% of abandoned patents get abandoned. They just didn't work. The story is, weather war is something they really want to own. They can do minor modifications, but nobody controls the weather. Spraying the sky is also requiring a nuanced view. First, are you talking about cloud seeding for rain or chemtrails, stratospheric injections for blocking the sun? They're two very different things and have very different risk profiles. I don't like either, but honestly, the cloud seeding at least has potential for good use. Chemtrails are just a terrible thing. There are dozens of peer-reviewed studies on the potential risks of blocking the sun and including cascading reactions far worse than what they call climate change. The main problem in this realm these days is that there are people online who think every line in the sky is a chemtrail. That's wrong too. There is so much more air traffic now with more efficient engines, adding that more homogeneous exhaust to a more turbulent environment by the greater chop effect of modern engines. Those all lead to more lines in the sky lasting longer than before, thicker than before. But also, veteran watchers here know that there is more atmospheric water vapor due to recent changes on our planet, more dust throughout the entire solar system, and more electrical energy in the atmosphere as the magnetic field has been weakening and letting in more energy from space. All of these things add up to more lines, thicker lines, longer lasting lines in the sky. It's not that chemtrails aren't real, it's that something else is being co-identified improperly. What you need to know is this. Some rumors are real and some aren't. Some of the real ones are overblown. Some are real and can be used dangerously. Most importantly, they don't control the weather. They can influence and modify it to a very minor but often meaningful degree. They can't create chaos or stop it in its tracks. They can nudge and whisper. Okay, listen very closely, you guys. Uh, this, I think this is a logical approach to here, and we don't give the government or mankind too much um, credit for what is taking place. And I say that for a couple of reasons, uh, but, but I want to get your thoughts on this because right now I see this thing raging back and forth, especially on uh, Facebook where uh, people just uh, they don't even think about the creator. And by the way, this thing was supposed to be a five when it hit and, and telling people they were going to die. If they listen, power of prayer. I think, I think y'all intervened on the, on the severity of that because it, I don't think his, his intention was to uh, just annihilate. It was to get a point across. Please keep this in mind when you are online. And regarding Hurricane Milton currently in the Gulf of Mexico, folks, it is peak hurricane season. Formations tend to occur, and that stinks, but it's what was forecast by pretty much everyone back in springtime. As for its eastward movement towards Florida, first, no, it's not that unusual. It is the prevailing direction of storms across the United States, by the way. And when it comes to Gulf hurricanes, the jet stream can drag an entire storm. It's exceptionally influential. And look at those upper level winds right now. Obviously, you see Milton is connected all the way up, and it is going to ride the jet stream to Florida. And no, they can't control the jet stream at all. If you remember one philosophy to go with these facts, it should be that you should suspect that our community is as targeted or more targeted with false ideas and stories than the wider population. We are harder to trick. They have a lot of limited hangout psychological operations going on us as well. Please don't get caught up in them. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone. Love Ben. You guys go subscribe to Ben. Just want to go one, one more with him. And that was uh, something he did the day. I think it was the day um, that it turned into a five uh, four days ago. So um, really, really good information here as well, you guys. Hey folks, it is time for an update on the solar hurricane connection. The sun impacts tropical systems with solar flares, proton storms, and geomagnetic storms, and that is amplifying due to the magnetic pole shift. In this video, we're going to review the video from February breaking down the peer-reviewed science, then the video on Hurricane Barrel posted July 1st, and then a few quick words on Melton churning in the Gulf. Let's start with the science. When the sun unleashes a coronal mass ejection, a CME, and it impacts the Earth, it excites the magnetic field and triggers electromagnetic activity below throughout the atmosphere. 
This video is from NASA, and the purpose of the video was meant to describe some of the ways that the sun drives the winds and the ocean currents. It does this by impacting the direct heating of the atmosphere and the electric currents of the global electric circuit. But even NASA's video doesn't cover or even mention that this forcing extends to nearly every aspect of the weather. We have seen the hundreds of papers on how solar activity impacts wind, ocean activity, clouds, rain, lightning, snow, temperature, humidity, and so, it should not be surprising that it also impacts the strongest storms in the world, the tropical systems, hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons. Folks, who controls the sun? The sun is not just random, okay? That solar flare that happened that supercharged this hurricane was very timely. And per it hit perfectly on that part of the earth. The earth could have been in a different place when that thing hit. And it happened to hit when the earth was facing, or, or this part of the earth was facing the sun's, um, uh, the burst that came from the sun. This was one of the key aspects of one of the articles we featured earlier today in the morning show. The electrical phenomena of the atmosphere is gaining more and more attention. Where it was once thought to all be about temperature directing pressure in the air masses, scientists now know it is a much more dynamic process. For those who are new here, in Chapter 5 of our textbook, there is a good deal of information about the sun's impact on major tropical storm systems, and extra tropical storms for that matter. There are studies that confirm this connection with solar flares, solar wind data, solar energetic proton storms, and of course, geomagnetic storms from when the CMEs impact our planet. And as they discover this more and more, it extends to the extra tropical regions and even severe thunderstorms over land. Many of you remember Ferris Walt, who won the National Science Championship for proving that coronal hole streams and tropical cyclones were related. A pretty amazing feat for a middle school student. And since our textbook came out, there have been several follow-up studies. You guys, a middle school student figured this out, okay? So that only bolster the previously discovered connection between the sun and tropical systems. Ones like this have even suggested it's not just the formation and intensification of those storms, but they're likely tracks to landfall that are impacted by the sun. Other studies dive deep into specific regions of the ocean and find all the same, while also driving into the mechanistic action of how it all works. So this morning's paper, while exciting to see, was not unexpected. Indeed, there are no countervailing studies in the last several years questioning this connection, and yet the sun's impact on storms remains outside of all climate models. It's a shame. But whether it is a solar flare juicing up the atmosphere, the solar wind pressure forcing Van Allen electrons downward, or the geomagnetic storm activity spreading across the globe, the global electric up and down circuit becomes excited. And as we discussed in a video just a few days ago, that electric circuit activity impacts the pressure cells, wind, clouds, and more. Later this year, the sunspot cycle will be peaking as hurricane season rolls around in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, and we will all get an excellent opportunity to see just how much the sun works these great storms in real time. Well, it's hurricane season now. We had the first serious geomagnetic storm of the period on June 28th, and during its impact on the atmosphere, just as predicted, just as we've been showing for several years, it triggered the first Sirius hurricane. And Sirius doesn't really do it justice. It was the furthest east storm at this time of year to form, the earliest Category 4 on record in the Atlantic Basin, and the strongest to ever hit these islands. Furthermore, its pace of intensification is utterly unprecedented. As of midday today, it's still intensifying. So let's go a bit deeper on the background. The papers on solar storm forcing of tropical activity have been more numerous in the last decade than in the entire history of science that came before. Once the door was opened, it was like a flood, with literally every study looking at the topic finding the same thing. Solar storms impact the tropical systems in a significant way, with special attention being paid to the geomagnetic aspect. That's what we just had happen this past week. Studies have even gone back in time and found major correlations like with Hurricane Katrina, the super outbreak in 2015 during a similarly strong solar storm surge, the triple storm system in 2017 that followed the largest solar storms of cycle 24, and even elsewhere in the Pacific, where Haiyan broke records on the heels of a powerful solar flare and magnetic crochet event in the atmosphere resulting from it. Also noteworthy, the tropical storm Chris has formed during this period this week, currently pounding Mexico. And by the way, the average third named storm of the year usually happens around early August. This has been the quintessential event we were talking about in literally every way you can slice it. Remember, every tropical storm is impacted by the global electric circuit and every aspect of space weather affects that circuit. Four months ago, we said to watch for major hurricanes to be triggered by solar storms, and that's literally what is happening as we speak. Solar maximum is in full stride. Hurricane season is here. Expect more in the months ahead.
So folks, here we are again. Several X-class solar flares the last few days, including one last night, adding to the level 3 geomagnetic storm taking place. That's two of the biggest ways the sun impacts the tropics combined at the same time. And, that's and that was around the time that this, the solar flare hit, and it went from like a 2 to a 5 overnight, you guys. So the sun had a direct impact. It was not man that did that. And I can see. I can see the point. I can see where <clears throat> modification has happened, and we've you somehow, as a human being, uh, been able to weaponize that against other human beings. Doesn't surprise me. Um, but for the fact that y'all gave us a confirmation through another believer in another video saying, oh, no, this is my hand. This is not. Don't give the enemy any credit for what is about to happen. Only Yah controls the sun, folks. So whatever man did in this, and let's say he created this, y'all used it. Don't you know he's, he, he has both? The darkness and light in his hands he said i create light and darkness i create good and evil and he uses both to accomplish his will okay so that even means working through man you follow so let's continue that's why Hurricane Milton went into record intensification and is one of the strongest storms on record today. These connections are very robust and they're getting tighter as the magnetic field weakens in the ongoing magnetic pole shift. We've been saying to expect this for years. We still expect it. And very good. Thank you, Ben, for that. All right. And so, so Rabbi Glazerson did this video on, on uh, Milton, and I'll translate for you guys. I know some of you can't understand what he says. It's almost like he's got a mouth full of marbles when he's talking. Um, but I understand every word he said, and, and so I'll translate for you. Let's listen to what Rabbi Glazerson says on Milton. Very interesting table. But By the way, the, the, this is hurricane. Hurricane is the access term, okay? And then up here, we're going to have Milton, right? So Milton is there. We've got the wind of, of Elohim, Ruach Elohim, the wind of Elohim, and we've got the United States here. That's what he's got in uh, in this table, just so you know beforehand. Best meeting of hurricane. Best meeting of hurricane. Milton. So he said a best hurricane and so. meeting. With the rabbi, he he likes to start off his videos the best meeting. So he's showing where where two terms come together that they are not normally supposed to be together. You know, it's not random. It appears here, and best meeting we said Olikan and Milton. More in this table, you have the word Olikan in red, and Milton. Purpose, you saw. Milton is going across. And then, what we have more. Amazingly, it appears exactly in the story of the splitting of the Red Sea. All right, so what he's saying here is, is it comes in the story of the splitting of the Red Sea. So the parting of the Red Sea, and not only that, it, it's where um, Yah is holding back the water with an east wind. Okay, so there's a wind blowing, and it's holding back the water, right? By the way, the Bible asks you a question in, in uh, Proverbs 30, verse 4. Who holds the wind in his fists, right? Do you know his name? See, si, Yamsu. And the description there is also the hurricane. By a shiver mind, the water came over. Egypt and the... So he's talking about how the hurricane and then talking about the waters that came over uh, uh, at, over Egypt, right? Chariots and horsemen mean on the people riding. So when the water came down on the chariots and the horsemen of the Egyptians, right? They, they were they were flooded. They were consumed by the water. On uh, horses, whatever it is, yeah. This is a parasha, and Rehbar, the chariots, what they had at that time. So what more you have here? You have here the first thing, the Asrata Brit, it is in the... In 
Is that the Brit? Is the United States? That's right here in the bottom. United States. Ruach Elohim, the winds of God. Ruach Elohim uh, is what he's talking about. The wind of God. God, yeah. Oh, there's no winds. Then, what more you have about disaster? Disaster. Disaster, definitely. And then, the most important thing, Shmor Mitzvotar Vetoratar, because all these things, just as we see in the prophecy of Stephania about such events. So here is... All right, so he's talking about here is, uh, you're talking about um, the prophet uh, Zephaniah, right, and the in certain events that are prophesied that are going to take place. And so he's going to talk about that for a moment. This is Shmor Mitzvotar Vetoratar. Keep my mitzvahs in my Torah and look, I gave you the Shabbos. So, interesting table as we said, best meeting of Oricon and Milton. Could have been on centers different. So, the best meeting of Hurricane and Milton. And we're going to look at this table. I've, I've searched it even further um, and found things that he, he didn't um, look for. In this state, Versata Brit. A disaster. All of it really appears in one book, Exodus. All appears in Exodus. Good chapter, which is also interesting, definitely. During the Exodus. So let's now. see now what the prophet Zephania. By the way, there was a big Exodus from Florida when all this was happening. How ironic, right? Chapter 3 speaks about such events. So what's the you can basically Zephania read along said, with what he is saying here. This comes from Zephaniah. They wrapped out nations. Their corners, towers are desolate. This is definitely uh, the twin towers. I turn their solar fells into ruins. There is none passing by. Think about the effects of a hurricane. Why? Well, there's nobody around without inhabitants. Then he carries on and said, and I thought that the, the she would fear me. Could... Talking about the people, when, when, when we're talking about she, uh, we're talking about the people, the nation, the daughter, right? Learn a lesson, and there's a punishment I brought on them. Right, so if we're talking about a she, which is a nation, right? Statue of Liberty is a she, right? And the punishment I brought on them, we're talking about a people, would not be lost on her. Would not be lost. Oh, no. Instead, all the more eagerly they have practiced corruption in all their deeds. But wait for me, says God, for the day when I rise as an accuser. When but wait for me, says Yah. For the day when I arise as the accuser, when I decide to gather nations, to bring kingdoms together, to pour out my indignation on them, all my blazing anger, indeed by the fire of my passion. When I decide to gather nations, to bring kingdoms together, to pour out my indignation on them. All my blazing anger, indeed, by the fire of my passion. Indeed, by the fire of my passion, all the earth shall be consumed. For then I will make the people pure of speech, some say the only tongue, 
So there's the all invoke. Look what it says here. So that they all invoke God by name. Folks, I've been trying to teach you the name of the Father. And in the end times, it tells us in Joel that people are going to call upon his name. When they're in distress, they're going to call on his name. Who did Yeshua call on? Did Yeshua call on his own name, folks? Let me just interject that there. Did Yeshua teach his disciples to call on the Father's name or his name? What did he teach them? Think about that. Because he is going to make the people of pure speech the Hebrew language, and that they will all invoke Yah by his name and render service with one accord, folks, one accord. Remember how I said none of the church is united, not one. Which one's right? They're all apostate. And we should be rethinking the denomination that we're in because it's not right. It's not. It says, come out of her, my people, that is talking about a religious denomination because the imagery is of a religious spirit. The woman that rides the beast, right? She's the harlot and she has daughters and they're called the daughters of the harlot, which makes them what? Okay, so the harlot would be the Catholic church. What is her daughters? Tell me what her daughters are. Do you know? It's the Protestant churches, right? So come out, come out of her, my people, is just that, folks. One accord. What's that one accord? His name. God, by name, and render service with one accord. So this was really the idea of such things happening in a holy concept elsewhere. All right, so let's go look. Let's go look at um the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. <clears throat> this is the table um, that we were just looking at with Rabbi Glazers. And as you can see, Hurricane is encoded right here. We're at a skip of uh, 3168, and this is in the book of Exodus, folks. Milton, Mem, Yod, Lamed. Tet Vav Noon Milton is encoded from this side to this side. Milton. Right? And we also got a soda brid, which is the United States, right here. Ruach of Elohim. And then remember, I told you that harp was here, but uh, the next rat is, is not encoded here. We've got harp right here. It's a very loose association, but it is there. Uh, we do have the word judgment. And uh, it only appears twice in this whole table. And it's right here in this cluster where we have judgment here and as an ELS. This is in the plain text. This is the ELS here. This word that's in a plain text here, which is an abacus effect. Um, and what I mean by that is it doesn't appear there normally. Um, uh, if, if you think of an abacus and you can only move those beads linear, right? So you can, you can permutate these letters to form new words and phrases. So what I mean by that, okay. It's not, it's not, let me go there. I should have fixed that before we, uh, we went on anyway. Um, it's the, it's the first three letters of one word and the first two letters of another word that form what the word that is there, which is the elections. Um, I said recently I had a feeling that this was going to have an effect on the re the elections. Um, the elections is also here. And uh, we've got Tempest Helen right here. So not only do we have Milton with Hurricane, but we also have the Tempest. That's the other word the Bible uses in several places. Um, when Yah pours out his wrath, or he, he, he causes something to happen, or he does something to a people, he uses a tempest, and he brings the, the waters of the ocean to the land, and, you know, strong winds and storms and things like that that rise up. That is called a tempest. When Yeshua was on the boat with his disciples, and he was sleeping in the bottom, a tempest rose up, folks. Don't you know that's, that's the hand of Yah? And who commanded it? it Yeshua commanded the wind. 
Okay. So with the with the burst of the sun and only Yah can control the sun and the timing of that. And then, you know, it, there being a prediction because he said, if my people who will call by my name, pray. Listen to me. It was predicted it was going to be a five when it hit. They were even saying, if you stay, you're going to die. And people were praying all over the place. And you see what he did. I think to date, there's less, less than... 20 or 30 people were killed in this storm. Okay. Big difference from the last one. Right. So power of prayer is, is a thing. Now, how does this relate to the election, folks? Let's talk about the election. Power of prayer. Can Yah change his mind? And what I mean by that is, is you know, there, there are many who are saying that God is telling them that Trump is going to be president. And then there's me going in the opposite direction with what I've found in the codes. And uh, I got to be honest with you, it's not a comfortable place to be. It does make me a bit nervous. I get a lot of messages. Jonathan, are, are you sure about this? Jonathan, what if this, um, that, right? There's a, there's a couple of ways we can look at this. There is a small possibility that Yah is going to allow Trump in there. It's not impossible. We did have with the, the eclipse going through those seven Ninevehs, you know, a message or a sign there that uh, the story of Nineveh also applies here. But you think about the story of Nineveh, what happened there? It was the king who initiated the national repentance. The king did that. He rent his clothes and he went into prayer and fasting and they got serious, right? There was a serious national movement for repentance. Have we seen that? Will y'all move to something smaller? You know, I know the prayer of a few can move mountains. I know that, but to, to call off the hand of wrath for spilled innocent blood, I don't know, folks. And y'all has not been, you know, clear with me uh, whether th this is th that's a possibility of, of, of something that happens. But I can see from the Bible stories and see from the signs that we saw with men over there that this has to be. Uh, I mean, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Then this this must be a a possibility with him, right? But here's the thing. Does that mean America is going to be a prosperous nation? Right. And, and all those, the, all that stuff is goes away because, you know, he can forgive a nation, but the, but the actual sin itself, there's a consequence for that, folks. Yes, we are forgiven, but there's a ripples. There's a rippling effect, like throwing a stone into a pond. There's a rippling effect that happens and it must play out. Right. So yes, he can he could change his mind, but let's say he did. Let's say that that, that Donald Trump is in there for four, four years. What is he going to do in four years, folks? What is he going to do in four years? And here's the thing: they're not going to stop trying to kill him because they can't stand him and they don't want him in there disrupting what many of these leaders that we have want to perpetrate. He is, he's going against the grain. And and yes, I know the Bible call or, or the codes have called him Yah's anointed. He used him, absolutely did. But is he going to bring him, is he going to use him anymore? I don't, I don't see that in the codes that I'm looking at, guys. I do see Kamala as being anointed. As a matter of fact, Kamala as the Mashiach. Kamala Mashiach means Kamala is anointed, right? And then Kamala as president. Some at some point. She will be the first female president, folks, whether that's this time or next time. It's going to happen because it's encoded, and it's stronger codes than I, than I showed you when, when Biden took over, and I was right about that. So don't be worried about me being right or wrong and re ruining my reputation. If y'all wants to destroy me that way, what did, what did Job say? Though he slay me, yet will I serve him, Right. I don't claim to be perfect. Matter of fact, I, I, 
I plead the same thing as as Isaiah. I'm a man of unclean lips, and and and, and I'm I'm a willing vessel to be used by him. But even if he destroyed me, like with Job, yet will I serve him. I don't think he's going to do that. I don't think he's going to destroy the credibility of his codes. Because it's not about my credibility, folks. When it comes down to it, it's about the credibility of, of the word, the, the credibility of the codes that have been spot on so many other times. And yes, there are people online doing codes that put out all kinds of weird st stuff. But who knows what kind of spirit they're operating in, folks. Just because they're using a code program don't mean that they're anointed, right? So so don't lump everyone into the same lump and say, well, this, this guy over here was, because there's some nutty stuff out there. I get it. And I'm even called a nutcase, but I don't really care. I don't care what they call me. Uh, I know what the father calls me. And so that's all that matters to me. Thank you for your concerns. Um, let's keep praying for this nation. Maybe y'all will um, have mercy on us. But listen, his will will be done. And it's not to save this nation and make it prosperous. It's to thresh this nation, folks, because that's the process. The Bible confirms that. That's not, that's not doctrine of Jonathan. That's what the Bible teaches. He says, everywhere, every nation that I have driven them, speaking of the Israelites and Judah. Folks, we got six million Jews alone, one tribe living in the United States. Everywhere that I have driven you, I will destroy that nation. He says that. He doesn't destroy the people. And he, and he does it to move the people, by the way. The exodus that just took place in uh, Florida. Very similar. When trouble is coming, right? Same thing happened in Egypt. And by the way, he allowed the, the, the Hebrews to go through the first few of the plagues. Why? Because he had to distress them enough to make them want to move. But he did not destroy them. He saved them out of it. And that's his promise. And I can prove that to you seven which ways from Sunday. With the, with the scripture. So don't worry about it. He's got your back. This, this, is, this is not about you, and this is not about Donald Trump in this election. God is doing something to this nation, and it's a necessary thing. It's called threshing. We're in the season of threshing and sifting, by the way, is a part of threshing. These are concepts that we don't, we don't learn in church, okay? So if you call off guard, it's probably why. Anyway, that's what I got for you, folks. Please comment down below. Let's talk about it. What do you think? What do you think has happened in the Gulf here? You think this was man that did this? He who controls the sun controls the weather. Think about that. Folks, if you haven't already, please support the channel with your thumbs up or your subscription. And if you could, if, you, if you're able to, please bless us with a donation. Um, that will help us out a lot. I do this full time and I teach a school full time. And uh, sometimes we just barely get by, but I trust in him that he's going to keep us afloat, folks. Um, be praying for me. I am um, traveling right now, 16 hours away from home by plane. And uh, I got to be here for a little bit and to take care of some legal things. And uh, then I'll be going back home. I'll be letting you know when that happens. And uh, be praying for me. Be praying for this world, this nation. Y'all's hand is moving and he's doing something. Pay attention to what he's doing. Shalom to you. May you bless you and keep you.